U.S. Foods, formerly known as US Food Service, is an American food service distributor. With approximately $24 billion in annual revenue, U.S. Foods was the tenth largest private company in America until its IPO. Many of the entities that make up U.S. Foods were founded in the 19th century, including one that sold provisions to travelers heading west during the 1850s gold rush. The company used the name U.S. Food Service until 1993. U.S. Foods offers more than 350,000 national brand products and its own exclusive brand items, ranging from fresh meats and produce to prepackaged and frozen foods. The company employs approximately 25,200 people in more than 60 locations nationwide, and provides food and related products to more than 250,000 customers, including independent and multi-unit restaurants, healthcare and hospitality entities, government and educational institutions. The company is headquartered in Rosemont, Illinois, and is a publicly held company trading under the ticker symbol USFD on the New York Stock Exchange. On the 9th of December 2013, Cisco Corp announced it would buy US Foods for $8.2 billion, $3.5 billion plus $4.7 billion of debt, but in June 24, 2015, US federal judge Amit Mehta ruled that the combined Cisco US Foods would control 75% of the US food service industry and that will stifle competition. On June 29, 2015, Cisco terminated its merger with U.S. Foods. History Topic Early history Several of the entities that comprised what is now U.S. Foods started in the 19th century. Monarch Foods, for example, traced its roots to Reed Murdoch Co., a Dubuque, Iowa, company founded in 1853 to provision wagon trains heading west. Reed Murdoch was a major sponsor of the Teeny Weenies comic strip. John Sexton and Company began as a retail tea and coffee merchant in Chicago, Illinois in 1883. John Sexton soon discovered hotels and restaurants were his biggest customers. By 1887, Sexton closed his four Chicago retail locations to focus on his institutional customers. By 1891, Sexton began manufacturing private label pickles, salad dressings, preserves, and jellies as well as roasting coffee in downtown Chicago. In addition, Sexton established a food testing laboratory to guarantee that his products had a uniform high level of quality. He also developed an extensive national institutional sales force in all major metropolitan areas, and a catalog mail order grocery business. All national orders were shipped via rail or parcel post from Sexton's Chicago warehouse. Chicago deliveries were by Sexton Horse and Wagon Fleet, and, after 1924, Sexton Electric and Diesel Truck Fleets. By 1930, Sexton dropped the catalog mail order business and concentrated on the institutional customers throughout the United States. In 1933, Sexton opened a warehouse and truck fleet in Brooklyn, New York to support the New York Sexton sales force. By 1949, John Sexton & Co. was operating branch warehouses and truck fleets in Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Detroit, Long Island City, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh to support the Sexton national sales force. In 1962, John Sexton & Co. was listed as a public company on the over-the-counter stock market with $79 million in sales and $2 million in profits. In 1968, John Sexton & Co. had $90 million in sales, which represented 5% of the total institutional foodservice industry. In 1968, Sexton warehouses and truck fleets were located in Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Dallas, Detroit, Los Angeles, New York, Orlando, Philadelphia, St. Louis and San Francisco with a regional sales force covering the majority of the United States. This gave Sexton a coast-to-coast -coast distribution and sales network to service their 79,000 customers. In late 1968, John Sexton & Co. was purchased by Beatrice Foods for $37.5 million in Beatrice Preferred Shares and Assumption of Sexton Debt. Beatrice Foods operated Sexton as an independent division until 1983, when Beatrice sold Sexton to S. E. Rykoff & Co. of Los Angeles, California for $84.5 million. L. H. Park Company started in 1889 as a partnership of Louis H. Park and William P. M. Irwin. The partnership took over the small provision pushcart business of Samuel Irwin, a Civil War vet, who had lost his arm in the Battle of Winchester, Virginia. 
Park started as a seller of coffee, tea and spices. The company grew to be a major institutional wholesale seller of canned goods and had five locations Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C., Albany, New York and Richmond, VA by the time it sold out to Consolidated Foods in 1962. Donald Irwin Jr., president of Park, became the first president of Monarch Institutional Foods at that time. Los Angeles-based S.E. Rykoff & Co. was established in 1911, and the Mazo & Lurk families started their business in Northern Virginia in 1927. Most of these wholesalers tended to specialize, selling items to local grocery stores. In the early 1930s, distributors, including Mazo Lurk Company, began offering frozen foods, primarily frozen French fries and orange juice. Post-World War II Food service distributors served institutional clients that provided food away from home, unlike retail distributors, who sold to grocery stores. The first distinction between the two groups came about in 1951, with the formation of the Association of Institutional Distributors. With fighting going on in Korea, the federal government reinstituted price controls, including a 16% ceiling on food distributors' gross profits. About a dozen companies met in Chicago to respond to that action. Because it cost more to distribute to their institutional customers than to grocery stores, the distributors wanted to be considered separately from grocery wholesalers and to have their ceiling raised to at least 21%. They were successful in their lobbying efforts. The federal government also helped open up food service markets. Five years earlier, in 1946, the U.S. Congress passed the National School Lunch Act. Suddenly, large numbers of schoolchildren were eating cooked meals away from home, and school cafeterias became the first institutional mass market. One of the few distributors to focus on schools was the Pierce Young Angel Company PYA in the Carolinas. That same year, Consolidated Foods Corp., the precursor of Sarah Lee Corporation, acquired Monarch Foods. By the late 1950s, most distributors had added frozen foods to their product lines. In 1958, Mazo Lurk held the first food show, and was one of the first distributors to offer both custom-cut meats and beverage dispenser programs. The diversification trend continued over the years, as food service distributors provided disposable items such as paper napkins and tablecloths, followed by china and glassware, then light and heavy equipment. Topic the 1960s In 1965, Americans spent just 20 cents of every food dollar for food away from home. Total distributor sales that year were an estimated $9 billion, and the average institutional distributor had an annual volume of $1.05 to $2 billion. Institutional Distributor, in its first survey of the food service distribution industry, found that the average order size of respondents was $80.40, and the average number of customers was 572. The survey also found that nearly half of the respondents sold to both grocery and institutional customers. In 1962, John Sexton and Company went public and its shares traded on the over-the-counter stock market NASDAQ with $79 million in sales and $2 million in profits. Topic the 1970s The decade of the 1970s saw the move to broadline, multi-branch organizations. Consolidated Foods bought the old Pierce Young Angel Distribution Network in 1971 and merged it with its Monarch Foods subsidiary to form PYA, Monarch. Cisco was established in 1970 by combining five independent wholesale grocery companies. Cisco went public in 1970 with $115 million in annual sales and shares were traded on the NYSE. Continental Coffee Company established in 1915 by the Cone family CFS Continental went public in 1970. S. E. Rykoff & Co. was generating $1.9 million in profits with revenue of $75.9 million and went public in 1972. In 1973, Continental Coffee Company changed their name to CFS Continental, Inc. to reflect the growing importance of food service to their traditional coffee business. By the end of 1979, Cisco of Houston, Texas has sales of $895 million. CFS Continental of Chicago, Illinois had sales of $775 million. 
PYA, Monarch of Greenville, South Carolina had sales of $614 million, John Sexton and Company of Chicago, Illinois had sales of $350 million. S. E. Rykoff & Co., of Los Angeles, California was generating $320 million strictly on the West Coast. The 1980s The distribution industry went through a difficult period during the early 1980s, with companies under pressure as a result of inflation and economic slowdown. However, people still needed to eat, and much of the pressure was from competition. Speakers at national conferences focused on customer service, productivity, and professional development. Computers were playing a greater role in the business, enabling a distributor to provide customers with information to help control inventory, determine menu costs, and analyze profitability. As distributors became more professional, restaurant chains such as Marriott and Howard Johnson folded or reduced their self-distribution activities and focused on their restaurant operations. By 1982, institutional food service distribution was a $69 billion industry. The five companies considered national distributors were PYA, Monarch, John Sexton and Company, $360 million in sales, a division of Beatrice Foods, Cisco Corporation of Houston, $1 billion in sales, CFS Continental Inc, $1 billion in sales, and Kraft Food Service. The five companies had a total of 168 distribution centers covering major portions of the country. Despite the geographical dominance, these five multi-branch distributors reported combined sales in 1982 of $4.8 billion 7% of the total food service industry. Over the next several years, the big distributors made major acquisitions. S. E. Rykoff & Co. bought John Sexton & Company in 1983 for $84.5 million from Beatrice Foods, in what was then the largest acquisition in the industry. The renamed Rykoff Sexton took fourth place among food service distributors with $800 million in sales. CFS Continental, Inc. purchase of Publix Fruit and Produce moved it into third place, with sales in the $1.1 billion range. Number 1 Cisco acquired B.A. Railton along with Pegler, increasing its volume to over $2 billion. Meanwhile, in Greenville, South Carolina, No. 2 PYA, Monarch bought Fleming Food Service of Austin, Texas, raising its 1984 sales volume to an estimated $1.3 billion. By the end of its fiscal year in June 1984, PYA, Monarch was serving some 70,000 food service operators, and its 22 distribution centers blanketed 60% of the United States. PYA, Monarch was one of the first distributors to compete as a provider of services as well as products. The day of the distributor who merely warehouses, delivers, and takes orders for products a customer wants is over, company management told Institutional Distribution in a 1984 article. PYA, Monarch's mission statement revealed its goal, to be a premier company in every area of operations, providing products and services that can enable a customer to run a more efficient and profitable business, using the largest computer in the industry. PYA, Monarch phased in a new state-of-the-art data processing system. Totally centralized, the system made it possible for headquarters to carry out data processing for each of the 22 branches, whose computers now gathered data. The 1980s saw a tremendous change in the eating habits in the United States. By 1986, Americans were spending one-third of every food dollar outside the supermarket, and the food service distribution had grown to a $78 billion industry. By April 1989, Sarah Lee Corporation had decided to sell off the northern division of PYA, Monarch, citing dissatisfaction with its performance. Although the Southeast Division was the top food distributor in its region, overall PYA, Monarch ranked third behind Cisco and Kraft, and Sara Lee was committed to being first or second in each of its businesses. In June 1989, members of PYA, Monarch Management incorporated a new entity, JPF Holdings, Inc. Two weeks later, on July 3, JPF Holdings acquired all the capital stock of the Sara Lee subsidiary, JP Food Service Distributors Inc., including the Mid-Atlantic and Northeastern operations of PYA, Monarch Inc. Under the terms of the leveraged buyout, Sara Lee retained ownership of PYA, Monarch, now operating in the Southeast, as well as 47% of the shares in JP Food Service. Headed by James L. Miller, who had been executive vice president of PYA, Monarch's Northern Division, the new company immediately sold three of its branches, Los Angeles, Little Rock, and Paducah, to Kraft Food Service. 
The result was a major regional operation with nine distribution centers serving a territory from Virginia north to Maine and west to Nebraska. JP Food Service Distributors passed the $1 billion mark in its first year, with sales for fiscal 1990 of $1.02 billion. That was a jump of more than 12% from the division's sales in fiscal 1989, and made the new company number 5 among the top 50 distributors selected by institutional distributor. But Miller and the other managers had borrowed over 95% of the $317 million they paid for the company. With that amount of debt, and with a soft economy, JP concentrated on building the lowest cost structure in the industry. The company invested primarily in improving facilities, adding a new $15 million replacement center between Washington, D.C., and Baltimore and building an addition at its Allentown, Pennsylvania warehouse that doubled freezer and cooler capacity. It also used technology to cut costs and provide greater service to its customers. For example, a handheld electronic device allowed JP customers to monitor their inventory and send information to the company. The 1990s In November 1994, five years after it was created, the company adopted the name JP Food Service, Inc. and went public in November, listed on the NASDAQ under the symbol JPFS. Sarah Lee Corporation now held 37% of JP Common stock. The public offering raised $86 million, and JP restructured and paid off much of its debt. JP Food Service had more than 21,000 customers in 25 states in the Mid Atlantic, Midwest, and Northeast regions of the country and was the sixth largest food distributor. It provided customers with a broad line of products, including canned, dry, frozen, and fresh foods, paper products, detergents, and light restaurant equipment. With its debt problems resolved, the company set a new growth strategy which, in addition to increasing internal growth, included acquiring smaller distributors. Its first purchases were Tri-River Foods, Inc. and Retail Inc., two Pennsylvania distributors. JP's strategy also called for increasing its line of private label products, which included Hilltop Hearth Breads, Cattleman's Choice Meats, and Rosalie Italian Foods. Food service distribution had grown to become a $124 billion industry, and the ten largest distributors accounted for 18% of the business. JP's business, which for fiscal 1995 reached $1.12 billion, was about 55% independent hospital cafeterias, family-owned restaurants, and 45% chains. The increasing product demands and bigger menus of the chains and large restaurants were important factors fueling consolidation among distributors. Toward the end of 1995, the company and its former parent, Sarah Lee Corporation, began talks about exchanging PYA, Monarch, Sarah Lee's Southeastern Food Service subsidiary, for JP stock worth about $946 million. Yet, the two companies failed to reach agreement on several factors, including valuation JP's stock price had gone up in expectation of the merger, structure, and dilution of earnings to existing shareholders, and the deal fell through in February 1996. The experience left both sides bitter, and JP was expected to find a way to reduce Sara Lee's presence or end its investment in the company altogether. That separation occurred before the end of 1996, when JP held a public offering involving the sale of all the common stock held by Sara Lee. On December 31, 1996, JP Food Service moved to the New York Stock Exchange, trading under the symbol JPF. JP continued buying smaller companies, paying for them with $66 million raised by another stock offering. Acquisitions included Valley Industries of Las Vegas, Aero Paper and Supply Company, based in Connecticut, Squarey Food Service of Cincinnati, and Mazo Lurk Company, Inc., the 70-year-old food distributor based in Northern Virginia that had held the first food fair in 1953. By the end of the fiscal year in June, net sales were up 17% to $1.7 billion, with acquisitions accounting for about 6% of the increase and the remaining 11% from internal growth. JP's growth was significantly higher than the 3% for the food service distribution industry. The JP Food Service Company credited its internal growth to sales training and promotions and to the expansion of its private and signature brands. Topic U.S. Food Service The name U.S. Food Service comes from United Signature Foods, Inc., a broadline distributor based in Wilkes-Barre, PA. 
U.S. Food Service Inc. was formed in March 1992 by Unifax Inc. specifically to acquire the White Swan Inc., a Dallas-based distributor. The merger with White Swan Inc. was completed in October 1993. Via a share exchange, shares of White Swan were swapped for shares of U.S. Food Service. It created one of the largest broadline distributors in the country. The resulting combined entity had five operating subsidiaries, White Swan, Bevaco Food Service, King's Food Service Inc., Roanoke Restaurant Service and Biggers Brothers Inc., thus operating food service distribution centers in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Texas, Ohio, West Virginia, Oklahoma and Florida. Merrill Lynch Capital Partners, a wholly owned subsidiary of Merrill Lynch & Co., owned a controlling ownership in both White Swan and U.S. Food Service. By virtue of its funding each company's leveraged buyouts, White Swan in 1988 and Unifax Inc. in 1992. The U.S. Food Service management team will include Frank Bevavino, President and Chief Executive, Thomas G. McCullen and Peter Smith, Vice Presidents, David F. McCannelly, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, and William Griffin, Vice President of Administration. In 1995, U.S. Food Service of Wilkes-Barre, PA was the fourth largest broadline food service distributor, according to Institutional Distributor Magazine, behind Cisco, number one, S.E. Rykoff, John Sexton, D. B. A. Rykoff Sexton, number two, and Kraft Food Service, number three, and just ahead of JP Food Service, number five, and PYA Monarch, number six. Within the next 12 to 24 months, S.E. Rykoff, John Sexton would establish a solid hold of this number two spot by acquiring Continental Foods of Baltimore, Maryland, H&O Foods of Las Vegas, Nevada, and U.S. Food Service. Rykoff Sexton Management created the Rykoff Sexton Funding Corporation to finance the acquisition of their near competitor U.S. Food Service, and by the end of 1996 the newly renamed and much larger corporation was now trading on the New York Exchange as Rykoff Sexton Inc. U.S. Food Service had now become a division of Rykoff Sexton Inc. The Rykoff Sexton Inc. parent corporation was now operating a handful of divisions, a broadline food service distribution division D. B. A. U.S. Food Service after combining with the S.E. Rykoff and John Sexton and co-distribution divisions, a private label manufacturing division historical food service brands like John Sexton and Serco, a food service contract and design division historically known as Feingolds, and food service equipment and supply second in size at the time to only Edward Don and company. Rykoff Sexton Inc. management was not done yet, negotiations were already underway in 1997 to combine with J.P. Food Service. Mark Van Stecklenburg, then chairman of the board and chief executive officer of Rykoff Sexton Inc., and the former president and chief executive officer of GVA, Inc., the largest food service distributor in the Netherlands and a subsidiary of Royal Ahold NV, had led the second largest food distributor Rykoff Sexton Inc. into the combination of the industry's number two, number four, and number five largest corporations in less than 24 months. In early 1997, Mark Van Stecklenburg said, Rykoff Sexton Inc., U.S. Food Service will be the number one, number two, or number three player in every market in which it serves the broadline food service distribution business. In late 1997, JP Food Service $1.7 billion in revenues jumped into second place among food service distributors with the consummation of a merger with rival Rykoff Sexton Inc. with just under $5 billion in revenues for $1.4 billion. Unlike previous acquisitions that J.P. Food Service had undertaken, the merger with Rykoff Sexton was much bigger. Sales were expected to triple, to $6 billion, and the number of J.P. Food Service customers ballooned to 130,000. As a result, Standard & Poor's added J.P.F. to the S&P Midcap 400 index. The merger also changed J.P. Food Service from a major distributor in the East and Midwest into one operating coast-to-coast. New territories included the Southeast, the Sun Belt, and the West Coast. The re-emergence of U.S. Food Service Mark Van Stecklenburg in early 1998, now a director on the J.P. Food Service Board, Vice Chairman, of the J.P. Food Service Board, and President of J.P. Food Service, gave the reins of the corporation to Jim Miller, and returned to Royal Ahold NV, NYSE, AHO, ADR, the leading international food provider with major operations in the U.S., Europe and Latin America. 
Shortly after the departure of Mark Van Stecklenburg, JP Food Service changed its name to U.S. Food Service. Thus the re-emergence of the U.S. Food Service Corporation, previously privately held in 1995, as of Monday March 2, 1998, the trading symbol was changed from JPF to UFSD and was now being traded publicly on the New York Stock Exchange. Acquisitions continued even as the new U.S. Food Service NYSE, UFS, worked to assimilate the Rykoff Sexton operations, adding Sorrento Food Service, Inc., of Buffalo, Westland, a Minnesota custom cut meat specialist, and a number of other smaller food service companies. By mid 1998, Chairman and CEO Jim Miller was proud of the accomplishments, telling the Baltimore Sun, we not only successfully completed the largest merger ever in our industry, tripling the size of our company, we did so achieving record earnings and meeting or exceeding virtually every goal set out in our merger plan." In the third quarter of the calendar year 1998, U.S. Food Service announced it was selling the assets of its Rykoff Sexton Manufacturing Division as part of its plan to shed its non-core operations. The successful integration of the larger Rykoff Sexton Company made U.S. Food Service a favorite among analysts, and the company itself indicated it was still on the lookout for purchases in the highly fragmented food service industry. One year later, 1999, fiscal 2000, U.S. Food Service is generating sales that exceed $7 billion and has caught the attention of Royal Ahold NV NYSE, AHO ADR. Within the first quarter of calendar year 2000, Royal Ahold has filed a tender offer, filed by Ahold Acquisition, Inc. and Koninklijke Ahold NV with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, to purchase all outstanding shares of U.S. food service. The 2000s March 20, 2000, U.S. food service agreed to be acquired by Royal Ahold for $26 per share or $3.6 billion. To strengthen its presence in the southeastern United States, U.S. Food Service acquired former sister company PYA, Monarch for $1.57 billion on December 5, 2000. The acquisition meant U.S. Food Service's sales would now reach $12 billion annually. In November 2001, the U.S. Food Service division of Ahold, acquired Alliant Exchange Inc., parent company of Alliant Food Service. This greatly expanded the geographical range of its activities. In fact, U.S. Food Service said Alliant would give it access to 21 new U.S. markets. This $2.2 billion purchase gives U.S. Food Service distribution centers and food processing facilities in areas that are serving 100,000 customers, including independent and multi-unit restaurant operations, hotels, contract food service operations and healthcare facilities. In 2000, Alliant Food Service reported revenues of $6.6 billion. Kraft Food Service became Alliant Food Service in 1996 after Clayton, Dubelier, and Rice, Inc. purchased the Kraft Food Service division from the Philip Morris Corporation. After the Alliant acquisition, U.S. Food Service was now generating combined total revenues of approaching $14 billion. U.S. food service growth was 600% over the last six years, from about $2 billion in revenues in 1995, to $14 billion in late 2001. The making of U.S. food service reflects the trends of its industry, from retail to institutional customers, from specific products to a broad line of offerings, from single distribution centers to multi-unit branches, increased professionalism and customer service, and, most pronounced, the continuing and aggressive expansion through acquisition. Topic U.S. food service taken private by investment funds During 2006 there was much speculation as to which equity firm would acquire U.S. food service from Royal Ahold. Ahold had refused to consider a spin-off of the subsidiary to the capital markets, and appeared to be headed toward an auction that J.P. Morgan would manage. This was consistent with many larger going concerns in the United States that appeared to be headed away from being publicly traded in what many believed was an attempt to avoid the requirements of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. After the internal accounting controls and procedures struggles that U.S. Food Service had gone through over the past three years, the very same that the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002 was designed to address, one had to wonder if U.S. Food Service being privately held was the proper path toward a transparent valuation of the company. On May 2, 2007 Clayton, Dubelier and Rice, Inc. CD and, R. and Kohlberg Kravis Roberts and Co. LP announced a definitive agreement to acquire U.S. Food Service from Royal Ahold. 
Funds affiliated with CD&R and KKR are equal partners in the transaction, valued at $7.1 billion. The Washington Post quoted Robert S. Golden, an executive vice president at Technomic, a food consulting firm in Chicago, as saying, when a hold acquired U.S. food service, the industry consensus was that it overpaid. Industry analysts had previously estimated U.S. food service could be worth $5.1 billion to $5.7 billion, the Post reported, adding that industry experts now agreed that a hold got top dollar. For a hold this is a reasonably good end to what's been a pretty unsuccessful foray into U.S. food distribution, Golden continued. It's been a sore spot for them. They overpaid for the business and never rationalized it. I would imagine they are pretty happy to put this one behind them. The Post added that a hold was forced to restate more than $800 million in earnings after it came to light that U.S. food service executives had inflated promotional rebates from suppliers to meet earnings targets. The scandal caused the parent company's shares to plunge. A hold settled with the Securities and Exchange Commission two years ago and agreed to pay $1.1 billion to resolve shareholder lawsuits. The 2010s On August 13, 2010, U.S. Food Service announced that John A. Lederer was appointed President and Chief Executive Officer effective September 8, 2010. <laughs> Acquisitions Under Lederer, U.S. Foods made several acquisitions in 2010 and 2011 including Nino's Wholesale, Midway Produce, WVO Industries, Ritter Food Service, Cherniglia Products, Great Western Meats, Inc., and Vesuvio Foods. U.S. Foods also acquired the local restaurant distribution business of White Apron. In 2012, U.S. Foods acquired New City Packing Co., Bears Distribution, and Hawkeye Food Service Distribution. In 2013, Quant's Food Service Distributors. In 2015, Dirk's Waukesha. In 2016, Save on Seafood, Jirachi Foods, Freshway Foods, Cara Donna Provision Co. In 2017, Toba Inc. Distribution Companies, F. Christiana, First Class Foods, SRA Foods and All American Foods. U.S. <laughs> food Service Becomes U.S. Foods On September 26, 2011, U.S. Food Service unveiled its new corporate name, U.S. Foods stylized as U.S. Foods and brand identity, reflecting its strategic focus on creating a better food offering and an easier service experience for customers. In October 2011, the company launched a new brand identity reflecting its strategic focus on creating a better food offering and service experience for customers. Since, U.S. Foods has introduced more specialized products, brands and services to help drive customer growth. <laughs> Speciality divisions and companies <laughs> North Star Food Service As part of its rebranding in October 2011, the company changed the name of its North Star Food Service divisions to U.S. Foods. Topic Next Day Gourmet As part of the company's rebranding effort in October 2011, U.S. Foods changed the name of its equipment and supply division from Next Day Gourmet to U.S. Foods Culinary Equipment and Supplies. Topic. Stock yards. In February 2000, Stockyards Packing was sold to U.S. Food Service. U.S. Food Service owned seven other custom meat cutters at the time and wanted to add a company with a solid reputation to its mix. Other pluses in acquiring Stockyards were that company's strong management and labor force, their excellent customer service, reputation for high-quality products, and the fact that Stockyards was a certified Angus beef distributor. Dan Pollock stated at the time of the acquisition that he hoped to use Stockyards' expertise to streamline and standardize the meat-cutting operations of U.S. Foods. <laughs> 